Today, we embark on an exciting journey to uncover the flavorful origins and rich historical background of a beloved Danish dish frikadella. Our tale begins with the name, frikadella, which has its roots in the German word, frikadel. While this savory delight may be quintessentially Danish today, its history traces back to the Middle Ages when it first made its way into Denmark, thanks to German immigrants. Over the centuries, it has evolved into a culinary treasure of Danish cuisine. Venture with us into the past and picture Denmark in the 19th century. Frikadella was fast becoming a household favorite, offering comfort and satisfaction. The aroma of frikadella filled the air as stories were shared, becoming cherished memories. Now, let's delve into the essential ingredients that give frikadella its distinctive taste. Traditionally, these delectable meatballs are crafted from a blend of ground pork and beef, finely chopped onions, breadcrumbs, eggs, and a medley of aromatic spices such as nutmeg and allspice. But remember, the beauty of frikadella is its adaptability you can experiment with various meats and even create vegetarian versions. With our ingredients in hand, it's time to explore the joyful process of making frikadella. Begin by combining the ground meat, onions, breadcrumbs, eggs, and the fragrant spices. Then, lovingly shape the mixture into small, round meatballs, each one representing a slice of Danish culinary heritage. These meatballs can also be slightly flattened, giving them their signature appearance. Now, on to the cooking process. Danish kitchens have perfected the art of preparing frikadella, resulting in regional variations. Some opt to pan-fry them, achieving a crispy, golden crust. Others prefer baking them in the oven for a different texture. There's even a unique method of poaching frikadella in a flavorful broth, which infuses them with a distinct taste. In a mixing bowl, combine the ground pork, or your meat mixture, with the finely chopped onion. Then, add the breadcrumbs, salt, black pepper, allspice, and nutmeg. Mix everything together thoroughly. Crack one egg into the mixture and mix well. If the mixture is too dry, feel free to add another egg. The eggs help bind the mixture together, ensuring your frikadella hold their shape and stay tender. With clean hands, shape the mixture into small, round or slightly flattened meatballs. The size and shape are flexible, so you can make them to your liking. Heat a frying pan over medium-high heat and add a knob of butter or a drizzle of oil. You want enough to coat the pan lightly, creating a nice sear on your frikadella. Place your shaped frikadella in the hot pan, ensuring they have enough space around them for even cooking. Fry them for about 3-4 minutes on each side or until they're beautifully golden brown and cooked through. Once your frikadella are cooked through and have that lovely golden color, transfer them to a plate lined with paper towels to remove any excess oil. Now comes the best part, serving and savoring. The traditional way to enjoy these delightful Danish morsels is piping hot, straight from the pan or oven. They are typically served with creamy mashed potatoes, a generous ladle of savory gravy, and a side of tangy pickled red cabbage. The harmony of flavors is nothing short of spectacular. Frikadella is more than just a meal. It's a delightful journey through time, culture, and taste. Its history may be rooted in the past, but its appeal remains as vibrant as ever. Whether you're an experienced chef or a kitchen novice, don't hesitate to embrace the art of making frikadella. It's a culinary experience that connects you to Danish heritage and leaves you with a heartwarming sense of satisfaction. So, gather your ingredients, infuse them with love and history, and savor the joy of preparing this classic Danish dish. Happy cooking, and may your frikadella be a delectable tribute to the rich tapestry of flavors that make up Denmark's culinary heritage. Now let's blow your mind with our next dish. We're embarking on a delicious journey into the heart of Hungarian cuisine to explore the history, ingredients, and process of making a beloved treat known as longus. Get ready for an educational, fun, and enthusiastic adventure that will leave your taste buds tingling with excitement. Our story begins with a trip back in time to Hungary. Longus, pronounced Langosh, has a fascinating history rooted in the culinary traditions of this beautiful Central European country. The term, longus, is believed to have originated from the Hungarian word, lang, meaning flame, referring to its traditional method of cooking, which involved frying the dough over an open flame. Historically, 
longus was a staple of Hungarian shepherds and later became a popular street food at fairs and markets. It was a simple yet satisfying way to nourish the body and soul during long days in the fields or while enjoying festivities. Now, let's dive into the essential ingredients that make longus a culinary delight. The heart of longus is its dough, made from all-purpose flour. You'll need about 2 cups. To achieve that airy, fluffy texture, you'll need one packet of active dry yeast, which you'll activate with warm water and a pinch of sugar. About one cup of lukewarm water helps create the perfect dough consistency. A pinch of salt adds flavor to the dough. A tablespoon of vegetable oil is used in the dough and for frying. Longus can be topped with a variety of ingredients, from classic garlic and sour cream to more adventurous options like grated cheese, ham, or even Nutella for a sweet twist. Let's roll up our sleeves and learn how to make longus. In a small bowl, combine the active dry yeast, warm water, and a pinch of sugar. Let it sit for about 5-10 minutes until it becomes frothy. This indicates that the yeast is active and ready to go. In a large mixing bowl, combine the flour, a pinch of salt, the activated yeast mixture, and a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Mix until a dough forms. Turn the dough out onto a floured surface and knead it for about 5-7 minutes until it's smooth and elastic. Place the dough in a clean, oiled bowl, cover it with a kitchen towel, and let it rise for about an hour, or until it has doubled in size. After the dough has risen, roll it out into rounds or oblong shapes, about one quarter inch thick. Heat vegetable oil in a deep frying pan or pot. Carefully place the dough into the hot oil and fry until it's golden brown on both sides, turning once. Once the longus is fried to perfection, remove it from the oil and drain on paper towels. Now comes the fun part, topping your longus. You can go traditional with garlic and sour cream or get creative with your favorite ingredients. And there you have it, a mouth-watering longus, a delightful piece of Hungarian culinary history that's both educational and incredibly fun to make. Whether you're enjoying it at a street fair in Budapest or making it in your own kitchen, longus is sure to satisfy your cravings and transport your taste buds to the heart of Hungary. So, get cooking and savor the joy of creating this delectable treat. And now we're diving into the heart of West African cuisine to explore the history, ingredients, and step-by-step -step process of making a flavorful and hearty dish, a goozy soup. Get ready for an educational and fun culinary adventure that will transport you to the vibrant culture of West Africa. Our journey begins with a glance back in time to the rich culinary traditions of West Africa, where a goozy soup has been a beloved staple for generations. A guzi refers to the seeds of certain melons, which are ground into a paste and used as the base for this delicious soup. The dish has its origins among the Yoruba people of Nigeria and has since spread throughout the region, with each community adding its own unique twist. A guzi soup holds cultural significance and is often served at celebrations and gatherings, symbolizing unity, hospitality, and the vibrant flavors of West African cuisine. Now, let's explore the essential ingredients that make aguzi soup a culinary masterpiece. For the aguzi paste, 1 cup of ground melon seeds, aguzi. You can find this at African grocery stores or grind them at home. And you need water about 1 half cup to make a paste. For the soup base, palm oil, 1 quarter cup of red palm oil a staple in West African cooking. You can use chicken, beef, or fish, cut into bite-sized pieces. Spinach, kale, or bitter leaf are commonly used. Onions, chili pepper, and stock cubes or seasoning powder. Ground crayfish, adds a unique flavor, optional. Salt and pepper, to taste. Ready? Let's roll up our sleeves and learn how to make this delicious West African dish. In a bowl, mix the ground aguzi seeds with water to form a smooth, thick paste. Set it aside. Season your choice of protein like your fish or meat with salt and pepper and cook until it's well browned. In a large pot, heat the palm oil until it becomes clear. Be careful not to overheat it, as palm oil can become bitter when overheated. 
add chopped onions or garlic saute until fragrant. Stir in the aguzi paste and cook, stirring continuously, for about 10-15 minutes until it thickens and the oil begins to separate. Season the soup base with your preferred spices and stock cubes or seasoning powder. This is where you can adjust the heat level to your liking with chili peppers. Pour in enough water to achieve your desired soup consistency. Add your cooked protein to the soup and let it simmer until it's tender. Finally, stir in your choice of leafy greens, which add color, nutrition, and a burst of freshness to the dish. Once the vegetables are tender and the flavors have melded together, your aguzi soup is ready to be served. It pairs wonderfully with fufu, pounded yam, or rice. There you have it, a flavorful and hearty aguzi soup that's both educational and incredibly fun to make. With its rich history and vibrant flavors, this West African dish is a true culinary delight that brings people together to celebrate the essence of community and tradition. So, get cooking and savor the joy of creating this delectable West African classic. Like and subscribe for more because more is definitely coming into your kitchen.